Passing the Torch Written and told by Kiefer Adams Boko, the Metropolitan Vicar's diesel, was the kindest engine you could ever meet. He worked on Edward's branch line, and when Edward was called away, he would keep those mischievous tank engine twins, Bill and Ben, in order. Boko was wise to their tricks, but hadn't been when they first met. Recently, Boko had been working hard at the clay pits after a visiting diesel had been sent away due to teething troubles. The fat controller, however, realised that there was more potential to Boko than first thought, and when he told him the news of a change, Boko was not going to like it. One morning, after he was told the news, Boko went to see Bill and Ben, who were bickering as usual. Good morning, lads, called Boko. Do you mind if I have a couple of minutes of your time? Is something wrong? asked Bill. Um, you might say that, sighed Boko. The fat controller's transferring me to the mainland. I'm to take over a goods engine that broke down. Will you be coming back afterwards? asked Ben, hopefully. I'm afraid not, replied Boko. It's a permanent transfer. But I hear the fat controller's got another diesel coming here. Hope he's more friendly than that diesel. Before Bill and Ben could say anything else, Boko left the yards to tell Edward the news. It's not fair, sighed Bill as they continued working at the clay pits. We've always worked well with Boko. Maybe it's because we frightened him when we first met, sighed Ben. The twins remembered all too well that they'd removed their nameplates and thought Boko had taken their trucks. Luckily, though, the misunderstanding was cleared up thanks to Edward. I'm really going to miss Boko, said Bill. Not as much as I'll miss him, said Ben. But I'll miss him more, sobbed Bill. No, I'll miss him more, whimpered Ben. For a good five minutes, the twins whimpered of who would miss the green diesel more, much to the foreman's annoyance. At Wellsworth Yard, Boko had just told Edward the news that he was leaving. Edward had wished him the best of luck and had gone to Bank Gordon up his hill. Boko didn't know what to do about Bill and Ben. He had looked after them for so long, he never thought about asking another engine besides Edward to help him. Just then, Boko spotted Mavis, the Farquhar Quarry Company's diesel, being refuelled in the corner of the yard. Hello, Mavis, called Boko. Boko, said Mavis, what brings you here? Boko quickly explained the situation. You might just be in luck, Boko, smiled Mavis. I might need some help at the Central Island Quarry. You're more than welcome to send Bill and Ben over, and I promised to keep an eye on them. That would be wonderful, Mavis, smiled Boko. I don't know what I'd do without you. Mavis smiled. She was more than happy to help. On Boko's last day on the Fat Controller's Railway, Bill and Ben came to Wellsworth Yard to see him off. Bill, Ben, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you, said Boko, despite how we met, of course. The twins chuckled. You know you're going to be working with Mavis from now on, don't you? Of course, said Bill. We don't mind at all. We're going to miss you, Boko, said Ben. Hope you have a safe journey. And a new beginning, added Bill. Thank you, said Boko appreciatively. Well, I'd best get going. The mainland awaits. Boko, the Metropolitan Vicar's Type 2 diesel, revved his engine and left the yards. Bill and Ben whistled non-stop until he was out of sight. Mavis was as good as her word. Bill and Ben soon settled in at the Central Island Quarry. It wasn't exactly the clay pits, but the twins felt like it was being from home to home. 
Mavis quickly showed the twins what needed to be done, and they were more than happy to follow her orders. But like Boko, they would still tease and cause trouble, only to be put back into place by Mavis shortly afterwards. It reminds me of a time when a dockyard diesel came to the quarry. I mustn't say anything more, unless you know which story I'm referring to.